All right, again, good afternoon. Uh, this is the June 23rd meeting of the Design and Project Review Committee. We do have a quorum. Um, we will call the meeting to order. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? I'll make a motion to suspend the rules to allow member participation electronically or by phone. Second. Michael Griffith, please call the roll. Knighton. Aye. Schnur. Aye. Uh, Callahan. Aye. Uh, Vanetta. Aye. Tristan. Aye. Hank. Aye. Jones. Aye. And Griffith. Aye. All right, next up, meet, uh, meeting minutes of June 16th. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of June 16th. Second. All right, Michael Griffith, please call the roll. Knighton. Aye. Schnur. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Vanetta. Aye. Uh, Tristan. Aye. Uh, hi. Aye. Jones. Aye. Griffith. Aye. All right, great. Uh, first item is 1030 Central Street. Tony Frandria applicant submits for a building permit to construct a 10 foot by 24 foot shed for youth golf education equipment storage Canal Shores Golf Course in the Open Space District. Tony, are you on? Okay, there you are. I am. Thank you. Okay, so why don't we're going to share our screen so I can see we can, everyone can see the packet. But um, when that's up, why don't you start to share? Uh, just go over what you want to do. Joanna. I'm going to defer to my colleague Mike to go over some of the particulars because he was involved. Sounds in was sounds good. All Thank right, we'll you. we'll get the screen up in just a second. Thank you. So um, did you want to give folks a moment to review what you're walking through, or do you want me to speak to? Everyone has had the packet since last week. You can go ahead and, and walk us through what you're planning to do here. That works so, for us. Certainly. So if you would stay on the image where you have it now, um, first off, everyone, good afternoon, and thank you for your time today. Um, um, I'm uh, speaking today in case, you know, Tony is the general manager of Canal Shores. I am a, a volunteer and a board member, and I happen to chair the grounds committee of Canal Shores, which I think everybody is aware is a, a now 100 and, 102 year old not for profit within our community uh, that's operated um, 11 holes in, in Evanston and, and um, seven in Wilmette, 82 acres owned by the Metropolitan Water, mostly owned by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, and we operate it under a uh, municipal lease that comes through the city of Evanston and the Wilmette Park District. Um, the uh, idea here, what we're, we're asking for approval on, is a storage shed uh, to support the materials used in our youth golf education. Um, it's a program that happens across three seasons, spring, summer, and fall, and the you know, greatest usage, of course, in the summer when we've got camps uh, all, uh, all five weekdays and, and afternoon clinics. And there's a travel team that plays at the course. And there's a, um, 
uh, all the way up to private lessons. And um, uh, there are hundreds of students that participate in the programs uh, that are offered. Um, and we expect in 2021, 77 scholarship students from the community, because one of our missions besides um, youth education, of course, is to make the game of golf more accessible and more affordable to those uh, within the community. Um, we uh, operate our youth golf programs with the support of a, an outside partner called the Golf Practice. Um, and um, the necessity of, of this is as the course, uh, excuse me, as the programs have grown in participation and in variety. Um, we need more material, more than we can accommodate in the um, limited extra space we have within the pro shop building. You'll see that to the uh, left, uh, the upper left corner of the building. Um, and so what we'd like to do is place this storage shed um, just to the northwest of our maintenance yard. Um, you'll see the red rectangle there. You can see its proximity to, um, we have both, uh, we don't have the room for a true driving range. So we have hitting nets and that practice green is one of two currently, we lost a couple to the Central Street Bridge project. Um, the idea here is that much of the programs, they utilize some of our ancillary areas like the practice greens, uh, the hitting bays, um, and this is also the area that is facilitated for drop off and pick up from the program uh, parents letting. And, and so we have kids from early in elementary school up through uh, high school that are participating in, in youth golf education. Um, uh, it's a pre-manufactured building, dimensions 10 by 24. Um, we think to blend in uh, quite well to the immediate area and um, again, supportive of the activities and mission of the course. I'll stop there and invite any questions. If there was something that I should have spoken to that I omitted, please um, let me know. Are there any staff questions at this time? Okay, keep going then. So as, as uh, you scroll down here, again, this is a, a pre-manufactured um, shed. Um, the rendering here, is, does it fair justice? Um, the, uh, there are no utility connections of any kind. We just need um, secure storage um, of the materials. When I say materials, just to give you more of an idea, it's um, quite a number of clubs, especially for those students who, who uh, whose families who do not have any clubs of their own to use, as well as some of the other materials used for skills, skill building, like limited flight balls. We have an inflatable thing that looks like Godzilla. They call it Golfzilla that they use to fire golf balls at, um, and a whole variety of other equipment used to develop swing and technique and learn the game. Um, and uh, when I say secure storage, one is obviously for making certain that we don't experience any theft. And obviously, this material needs to be protected from the weather uh, as well. And um, it's removed in the morning um, and brought out for the hours of operation and then returned and uh, uh, would be secured in the shed, just as we've done um, with this in prior years of the program, we've actually been split across a couple of buildings um, uh, across uh, one, one of them is our old starter shack uh, on the opposite side of Central Street. So again, growth of program as well as sort of the logistical difficulty of being able to run the programs with where the materials are scattered to gives rise to the need for this. Um, I'll pause there. Any, any questions about the I went back to usage, but any questions about the the design and and construction of of the shed? I'm not getting any questions. Um, any which uh, I guess I'll have a question for staff. Which staff member did the review on this? I, I did. Know. I came in through the permit process. Okay. Well, Katie, then, any comments um, or questions? I think I just wanted to confirm 
the setbacks um, and where it was going to be located precisely. Like I know it's kind of showing the general area. Sure. If you could go back to the image that has the, the this one. Thank you. A um, little further down the, where the the one you paused on this this right here with the so um, the if you look Katie to the to the red rectangle um, the, it would be again off the northwest corner of our shed set well back from the Central Street sidewalk as well as um, well back from the sidewalk that connects Central uh, ultimately to the Chandler Center um, and our pro shop building. Um, it is, you know, uh, intentionally put to be not that uh, neither noticeable, but, all, you know, we, we don't want it to be a, a, a place of attraction um, and, a, and a place to be noticed. So it's, I, as I was looking at it, I was having a little trouble orienting. Um, so it's not particularly visible from the right of way, right? Is that kind of Correct. The site plan, it's not north south facing the aerial. So I was trying to picture it. And uh, if, if you'd show the street view here and you pause here, do you see, could pause on this picture for a moment? If everyone looks over the hood of the vehicle on Central Street, just to orient everyone, that vehicle was facing east on Central Street or toward the Central Street L station. If you look over the hood and, and, and into the depth of the picture, you'll see the bright green of the hitting nets. So that'll give you an idea of okay. how, how far from the right of way or the thoroughfare that, that this is. And you'll recall from the image below, the storage sheds location would be beyond that, you know, further to the south. And, and again, like I say, it's tucked away, if you will, a little bit. Our maintenance chart, if you would go down, if you'd be so kind as to go down to the other image again for a second, please. Our maintenance yard, um, where you see the yellow lines, um, it is, uh, I'm, my geometry teacher would be mad at forgetting the, it's not a parallelogram, whatever the, whatever the geometric shape, but you can see the, the, the unusual shape or dimensions of our maintenance yard. This would be alongside the, that angled fence um, to the northwest corner of our, of our maintenance yard. Our first T um, is tucked, uh, you know, is um, actually, you know, if you're looking at, you see where on the right side, it says hitting nets and driving range. The, our first T is, is about over where the word hitting nets is on the, uh, on the page there. So again, not, not visible, really not visible at all from the street. Okay. Yeah, that's, that was helpful. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. All right. Um, anybody else for staff questions? All right, if not, is there a motion? I'll make a motion for approval preliminary and final review of the property, the work at 1030 Central Street. Second. All right, Michael Griffith, please call the roll. Nine. Aye. Schnur. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Vanetta? Aye. Tristan? Aye. Hyde? Aye. Jones? Aye. And Griffith? Aye. All right, great. Uh, item moves forward uh, for approval. Um, next up, 1815 Ridge Avenue. Leah Pinsky, applicant submits for a mural on the Union Pacific Metro embankment at the entrance to the site on Oak Street and Clark Street. Uh, and truly, truly Evanston in the D4 downtown transition district. Uh, yeah, are you gonna give the overview or Mike, Michael I, McLean, are you I, on I, first? I'm on the road. So um, Leah and Melissa are gonna handle the presentation. I just wanted to say hello and thank you for um, uh, hearing us today. And um, just to give a little background that many, many years ago, 
uh, when we first approved this project, murals under a different director um, before uh, you, uh, Johanna, um, were frowned upon. Um, and we lo looked at doing a sculpture. Um, during COVID, uh, in particular, we have realized how important flexible open space is that can be used. And looking at the smallness of the park with a sculpture in the middle of it really would hamper any real flexibility of use. So we called Leia, who we worked with at Maple Avenue uh, to do the Emerson mural um, and um, introduced Melissa, who is our executive director that's gonna be running the property at Truly um, to come together to create an idea for a mural for uh, the embankment near the site. So on that, um, I'm gonna be here for, for questions with the camera off but um, I'll let my team um, and Evelyn Mills from Condor is also on, uh, they can handle most of the presentation. So uh, let me know if you have any questions on what I just said, otherwise I'll turn it over to Leia and the team. Great. Thank you. Hello everyone, good to see you all again. I am happy to present this proposal for a mural on the Metro Union Pacific wall that's adjacent to this new beautiful um, senior living residence um, with a, actually it's going to have a new address. I think right now it's 1815 Ridge. So um, a little more background again, I don't know how important this is, but after receiving approval to move forward with the mural, they approached us at Art Encounter and our Evanston Mural Arts Program because they wanted to bring in an artist that would paint um, something that would be inspiring, inclusive, warm, um, non-figurative, and that could also incorporate some volunteering from the community. And so we fielded uh, proposals from a few artists, three or four that I had recommended based on experiences that I've had and people who I know are very skilled in all of these different uh, categories. And they chose to move forward with Molly Zakrajczyk, actually, um, knows, known by Molly Z. She's painted with us before on a metro embankment at Grove Street. And she's very skilled at creating beautiful designs that are warm and welcoming, uplifting, and she can incorporate the participation of community members as well. And she's that's sort of where her, her heart beats the strongest. So um, she's begun to put a design together. This is the bones of the design. In order to move forward with getting approval with the Metra, we wanted to um, provide them something sooner than later. There will be a little bit more detail than this, um, but the general idea of the mural is here. It's um, she always works with um, curvilinear shapes, things that represent um, images from nature, but in a really abstract, bright, colorful way. Um, the, the team was interested in, in having some text in the mural that will also um, bring a sense of, of hope and excitement and inspiration. So she's incorporating the words lived, inspired. I don't think this is the final font, but this is the kind of general placement. And it's a long wall. It's a low wall. It goes from five feet very, very slowly, or maybe it's four feet up to 10 feet. And it's about, a, I think, 160 feet in length. So our, our hope is to um, install this mural in uh, mid to late August, right after the building is delivered, I think is the term. And uh, we look forward to a hopeful approval from you today as well as any other questions you may have. Can you speak to where you are at with Union Pacific approval uh, for the mural on their property? Uh, so I had already, prior to sending all of the final documents for approval to Eric Varela, we had conversations earlier or email conversations over the spring just to determine feasibility of a mural on this wall, um, which resulted in um, a phone call approval that we did have feasibility and that we should just go ahead and send all the materials once we had them completed. So we um, had a, uh, we shared this design with the Arts Council and Paulina Martinez uh, 
a few weeks ago um, received their written approval. Um, have all of the other documentation. Jessica, if you'd like me to send you a copy of the proposal that was sent to Eric, I will. It was just sent um, last week. And now I'm just waiting because I know he, he takes a while. I was thinking of sending a hard copy in the mail as well as an email. If you think that that's a good idea, I will. I know they're very busy over there. I don't think you need to send a, a hard copy, um, but it sounds like you're in contact with Eric and I, mean, I would just note that the, the phone call is not sufficient approval from Union Pacific to move forward, um, but it sounds like you've already completed their forms. Yes, no, it wasn't, it's not, it's not approval. It was like the, can I, can I apply for, for this? And uh, so I should have asked him to put that in writing because I know there's generally two stages. Um, but he had said he looked and saw there was no plans to do any work on that wall, which is usually, as you know, what precedes the, um, um, you know, the given the kind of clearance to even submit a, a, a designs for approval. Um, Jessica, in your, I know that um, Adrian Guerrero uh, was typically slow in this process. I don't, and I've worked with Eric before once. Do you have any insight into uh, the best way to keep that moving forward? I would say email is generally the best way of getting in contact with Eric. Um, I do know that the approval process at Union Pacific for murals can take from approximately one month to three months. Uh, so I would just say, uh, don't hesitate to follow up with them. Yeah, yeah, I was sort of looking at that two month window generally. So I wanted to have it in by mid June if we wanna paint starting in mid August. Of course, there is some flexibility on that. Um, we know we have to be flexible. Uh, what, um, what is, I'm assuming that this mural will be maintained or it's sort of the, the similar um, engagement with other murals, you will revisit a new mural when the time comes. Is that the game plan? Yes. Well, since we have discovered some of the metro walls are not in as great condition as, as others, we definitely take that into consideration before we even kind of move forward. <laughs> on a wall is to look very carefully at the condition of the wall because we want to make sure we're engaging in projects that aren't going to need a lot of maintenance. Um, this wall is in great shape. There's very little signs of efflorescence or water issues. Um, so, you know, um, that, that allowed me to feel confident moving forward that we wouldn't have to be worrying about maintenance in that regard. Um, other, challenges that can come up. We hope they don't, but sometimes do around graffiti. Uh, you know, we've established better communications with the graffiti tech sign inspector staff so that um, we can learn, if we learn about those, uh, any vandalism, that we can take care of it with repair to the mural before it <laughs> becomes like, you know, painted over with a, a block of, uh, brown paint or gray paint. Uh, I don't know if that's, if, what, if either of those things or both of those things or there's other things that you're thinking about when you when you talk about maintenance. Um, but I think it's just making sure that it's not, it doesn't look um, uncared for over the course of time. I think obviously in the first few years of these murals, they're maintained nicely and then something happens that results in them not being whether it's the, the deterioration of the, of the metro embankment or um, some kind of tagging that that reduces yeah. the so yeah and and you know we've we've been working with the arts council for the last few years we did some maintenance on a green bay ridge i'm sorry a green bay central mural last year um foster street this year we're doing repair on the church and darrow murals actually like as we speak there's someone out there working so um yeah, that's, I know that that's really important to the city. Any other questions from staff? 
just to follow up on your question, Johanna, I see in your presentation that um, you guys are going to maintain it for four years, but what happens after the fourth year? Do you continue to maintain that? Do you revisit another agreement with Metro? Do you paint over it and it goes back to stone? What happens after four years? That's a really good question. Uh, I, I would like to maintain it for 10 to 20 years. You know, the, the, the building itself, the, uh, I think that truly would have to have some um, part in making the decisions about the, the lifespan of the mural. And uh, I don't know if you wanna speak on that at all today, Melissa, you know, if they wanna change it in five years and do something new. Um, yeah, I mean, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't know a lot about murals just to, to be completely honest, but um, we would absolutely want to make sure it looks looks great and, and we're keeping up with it, whatever we need to do, um, you know, and it's, you know, in four years, whether that's, um, you know, being in touch with Molly or however, however we can maintain it, um, but we're, you know, we want it to stay nice as much as the city city will, because it, you know, it'll be the, the thing that you see as you come into the community too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's big and beautiful, so. Is there a city right away up against this? I mean, I know there's a, that buffer strip with uh, grass and other vegetation. Is, is that vegetation gonna still be there? Um. Uh, this is Michael. I, I think we'll revisit the vegetation. Um, if if the mural is approved, I think we'll come back to you with some ideas about landscaping. We have some other um, we have some other issues of about landscaping we need to discuss with staff, um, which just came up with the church's lot as well. Um, so I think we we would like to have it maintained clear uh, with perhaps just grass planted uh, along the new curb line um, and the cars will be parking there um, once the road is, is permanently turned over again. So it will be open to the public and cars will be parked there. Uh, but the landscape, I think we would revisit in light of, of a mural um, uh, to be discussed uh, with staff. Okay. Because that was my concern is the, the, the maintenance of that vegetation, wherever it's going to be. That, that, that's my biggest concern. Yeah, we, I think we're, we're already obligated to maintain um, part of the landscaping on public space. Um, uh, but um, again, we would want to replan what that was. Uh, based on, on the an approval here um, that that would be necessary. All right, thank you. Uh, to that point about the, the right of way, I think for 1571 for that mural, you guys needed to get a right of way permit. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if that would probably be needed here as well. It looks like there's a little bit more space to work, so you wouldn't necessarily be in the street, but it, it, it's still kind of narrow, because I don't know if someone from Public Works would be able to, to clarify if you'd need to get uh, that. That's a good point. I was, um, there is a little more room. That was right on the street. There was no curb there. Um, right here i was hoping that we would get this done while we still were under construction right the road is is open but it's not finished and may and we could get it under that permit um if not we'll have to look at a, a temporary permit down the road um we, we, you know to to do it if we need to close it or something but we don't unlike the other one on Ma maple we needed the lift because the wall was so tall I think it was 20 feet tall here. Um, everything can be handled by, you know, from the ground or from a small ladder. So um, it may not be as necessary. I don't know, Leah, maybe you have some ideas on, on that. Well, I don't know what the 
rules are around, you know, how much green space there needs to be before the, the street. Um, it is quite different than the, the Maple or the Elmwood project, which was again, like right on the parking spot. So there was nowhere someone could, it's just the, the mural was right, right there. Whereas here, I think there's, I don't know, four feet. Um, I hadn't considered that the artist would need to step into the street, but at the same time, we've only looked at the wall when it's been under construction. So, I, you know, if it's if it's being installed when this is now in public space, I guess we'll just have to have to revisit that a little closer to installation time. But I mean, I do think the artist can do the work without having to get into the street. They wouldn't have to take any part of the street up. You said there will be um, participation from the community. Um, so then I would just make sure that the community that is participating in the painting of the mural um, is also aware of that. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll make sure we have very clear conversations with your team and, and us and, and, uh, and Michael as we plan that. It's not going to be a lot of people, but you know, still. All right. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I just wanted to go, yeah, Johanna, thank you. I just wanted to go to the um, vegetation question again or comments again. Um, so, as you know, I've been, I don't know what your plans were from the beginning. I didn't see all your landscape plans with the beginning of the work, but you know, you're required to have some sort of approved ground cover planted there. And if you're not going to do grass, which I think could get high and, and could possibly be an issue to maintain as cars are parked there, um, there's a lot of low ground cover that you can obviously put there, but you do have to have something. It can't be just um, dirt and gravel. So you do have to have some sort of ground cover. We'd absolutely, it, we actually um, started the landscaping last fall. Um, and then when we realized that, you know, we switching the public benefit statue to a large, or I think it's actually a 200 foot mural um, would, would be preferable. We kind of stopped on the landscaping installation. So we certainly have plan, we, we plan to landscape it. Uh, it is currently landscaped, um, but I, uh, the idea of a low-lying ground cover um, or, um, or or grass um, would be um, something we would consider. And we just want to come back with a cohesive uh, plan on landscaping. Um, again, if the mural is approved, it changes that we were going to screen this wall before, right? And now we want to expose it. So we just have to change it based on, on the approval or not. Okay, thank you. All right, hearing no further questions, is there a motion? I will make a motion uh, for approval uh, contingent on Union Pacific approval. Second. Second. Michael Griffith, please call the roll. Niden. Aye. Schnur. Aye. Cano. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Callahan. Aye. Uh, Vanetta. Aye. Tristan? Aye. Hi. Aye. Jones? Aye. Uh, Griffith? Aye. Great. Uh, motion passes, moves forward. Uh, we have no other items. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye.